well after years and years of this whole campaign fighting to get it we finally got the new version of Justice League and we are going to talk about it What's going on guys, it's me, Joshua, aka Future Film Act 3940 Reviews, where I talk movies, TV, and music, and I'm here to give you guys a new 2021 movie review. So before I get into this, thank, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and coming over to the channel today. If you like this video, please like this video because it does help with the algorithm. Comment down below what you guys think of this movie we're about to be talking about. Be sure to share this video with your friends. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get notified when newest videos are posted or set or sets premiere, as well as when I go live or when I post on my community tab. Otherwise, you might not get notifications to any videos, live streams, and community posts. And with that being said, let's talk about the long-awaited event that we never thought we would see. And that is Justice League, the Zack Snyder cut, or Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is the his original version of the film that was we were supposed to get back all those years ago of the 2017 superhero film of the same name which is the fifth movie in the DCEU but now with this car is the tenth movie of the DCEU and this is directed by Zack Snyder completely written by Chris Terrio from a story by Chris Terrio, Zack Snyder, and Will Bill, and stars Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, Amy Adams, Ray Fisher, Jason Momoa, Ezra Miller, J.K. Simmons, Jesse Eisenberg, Jeremy Irons, Diane Lane, Connie Nielsen, Sierra Hines, William Dafoe, Amber Heard, and a bunch of other actors. And before I get into everything here about this, Let's go into a little bit of the production history because it has been well documented as the years go along. So, if you're unfamiliar with the story behind the Snyder Cut, I'm going to give you some production advice. So, Zack Snyder, visionary director of movies like 300 and Watchmen and Dawn of the Dead and Sucker Punch and Man of Steel and BVS was the original director of Justice League and he shot a four hour movie but over six months before the movie was even released back in November 2017 he had to drop out for personal reasons due to his daughter passing away of unfortunate suicide and also because he was being pressured by the studio to make it more lighter and more funnier due to the huge critical and massive financial disappointment that was Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. And so he was replaced with Warner Bros. by Joss Whedon who was instructed to lighten the tone and was given a two hour maximum runtime mandate. So Whedon had to then rewrite, reshot hour of footage and rework the movie. So 10% of the original version of Justice League is basically Zack Snyder while half of it is Joss Whedon, and it led to the movie being critically and financially box office disappointment, therefore leading the DCU to focus on total of individual films. But this, those three hour footage of the Justice League movie that Zack Snyder made that was unseen. So after years for demand, HBO Max decided to fund the finishing for Zack Snyder's vision of the film, and DC Phantom happened, Zack Snyder announced it, and we finally got it. So
So, with that being said, let's get into the plot of, of course, just Lee. Zion Snyder's version. You want the truth? You want the truth? You can handle the truth! Fueled by his restored faith in humanity and inspired Superman's selfless act, Bruce Wayne enlists newfound ally Diana Prince to face an even greater threat. So together, Batman and Wonder Woman work quickly to recruit a team of heroes to stand against the newly awakened enemy Steppenwolf, who is out to get his mother boxes. But despite the formation of an unprecedented league of heroes, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg, and Flash, it may be too late to save the planet from an assault of catastrophic proportions. And also, with all that in the process, we do have Superman returning here. And let's get into it. So when they announced this not Zack Snyder Cut of Justice League, I was like, guys, there was no Snyder Cut. I was one of those people who didn't believe there was a Snyder Cut. I was like, SHUT UP! There is no Snyder Cut. There is no Snyder Cut. There is no Snyder Cut. But when it was confirmed last year that it was Snyder Cut, I was very excited, but very, very nervous because there were a few things in for the cut that was going to concern me, such as the runtime, the whole change of Superman's Where's costume, going? Ain't no and there was a lot there. So, kick ass. With all of that going on, I was I went into this new version of Justice League very excited. But also we were nervous about it. It was probably the 34th lowest uh, of my most anticipated of 2021. But I gotta say that going in after watching this, I am very happy to say that this is good. Now, as I am a fan of the DC, I love Zack Snyder's two previous efforts. I love Man of Steel. I think that is the best Superman movie we have had since the 78 film. Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, I am a huge defender of, but I only watch the ultimate cuts now. And also the other DCEU films. Suicide Squad, I was in love with it when it came out, but now over time, that movie has a lot of issues. And, but it's still watchable. Wonder Woman, I love, of course, you know that. I actually don't mind the Whedon cut of Justice League, even though there's a lot of production history that has been coming out about how Joss Whedon acted with this movie and how much was cut. And even though this has a lot of problems in terms of the overused CGI and the Superman mustache and then a lot of the humor not really funny. So this cut is kind of like my guilty pleasure. And no, I'm not going to throw this away just like everybody else because it is a waste of money. And also everything else after DCU I love, of course. Aquaman was fun. Shazam was great. Birds of Party, I love it personally. It is not woke. It's not SJW Bulls crap. And Wonder Woman 1984 is flawed but awesome sequel. Could have been better, but it could have been a lot worse. But where does this rank? I have to say, this is not only better than the we the the 2017 edition, but. This is also, in a lot of ways, way more structural than the 2017 version. Don't get me wrong, I still own the 2017 version. I don't hate it. I can watch it. But this is a better version of the film. And we're just going to go into it right now, starting off with the positives for Zack Snyder's Justice League. After seeing this cut of Justice League by Zack Snyder, I am honestly in utter shock and in baffled at the fact that Warner Brothers deemed this unwatchable. Are you freaking kidding me, Warner Brothers? I like you as a company, and I like most a lot of your movies. You made a lot of great things, but you also made a lot of bad things, but there is why would you claim this cut to be unwatchable? Ba -ba. And 
easily the first big positive that I do have for this cut of Justice League. Of course, there are going to be some comparisons towards the 2017 version and this new version. And the first big comparison is that the fact that this movie takes its time to give us character growth, give us setup, give us a lot more mythos and a lot more world building. This version allows us to go more in detail with the world that was set up previously in Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman. It acknowledges the world here. The movie is focused just about enough to where you actually get to, get, get to go into this world and actually get to know a lot more that you did. And it, spends a lot of the time throughout this entire movie putting the pieces together of what was picked off from the first two Zack Snyder directed DCEU films. Big thing with the Whedon version that I did have a problem with is that I feel like we needed more time and a lot more moments of explanatory and a lot more moments to actually care and in this version this version gratefully fixes that with the four hour and two minute runtime which i will go into in the mix aspect and the negative side but with this runtime there is not a single moment where it feels like nothing is inconsistent <clears throat> everything feels cohesive it feels much more structured and the way this is structured is the, in the use of a six part six part act so basically each six parts allows us to breathe and to spend time on a lot more focus on detail whether it's the whole thing with amazonian wars or apocalypse or just the team in general you get to feel that in this length and in this version the problem that the Whedon version of this movie has is that majorly there you can tell there is a lot of stuff that they just completely glossed over and didn't even care to fully acknowledge and that is one of my biggest issues with the Whedon cut even though as I will say again I do not hate but I felt like that cut needed a lot more development and a lot more things that need to be explained more. And in this version, it is explained more. And that was one of the big pauses I was very happy with going into this cut of JL. Also, a huge, 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 big, major improvement is the characters here. Every single character it's just the same as they are in the original version. The original version is still the same movie. This version allows us to care about every single team member in the Justice League. And I'll get into the acting a little bit. But I gotta say that the way that Zack Snyder and Chris Terrio, the screenwriter, allows us to sit here for the entire one time. And breathe and get to care about the conflict. And... The stakes and the emotional weight that each of these characters have as well as the characterization I think is very well done and this is definitely what should have been in the cut that we got in 2017 Zack Snyder he is a visionary director I don't love Sucker Punch and I don't love Legend of the Guardians, but all of his other movies, especially his DC Cinematic Universe movies, I feel like he knows what he's doing visually wise. Narrative wise, it's a bit of back and forth, but I can tell that this he had a clear vision in his head for this movie. And I felt like if Warner Brothers just trusted him instead of having to sabotage the movie and just take it from him I felt like things would have been much more better it's a miracle that things happened the way it did because we did get Aquaman and Shazam and Birds of Prey and we're getting more solid movies hell we just announced today that we are getting a Zatanna movie and I can't wait to see how that goes now let's get into the 
the big thing that I everyone asks. Did Zack Snyder deliver in the writing and direction? Because Zack Snyder is a very divisive director. He's a very ambitious filmmaker. He likes to go big. He likes to go upscale. He likes to just give it to you real. He's not like most other directors where he's just going to hold your hand and just just spoon feed you so to the point where you don't really get anything out of his direction style. His direction from the emotional act performances of his cast to the action sequences to setting up a lot of things that goes on for the course of the entire movie I love. I love when a director is able to fully do what he set out to do. And that is my biggest pro when it comes to this movie, of course. Now let's get into the performances because I gotta say, everyone in this cast, they're good in the fiasco edition, but everyone in this cast definitely got a lot more development to them. I want to start off with, of course, Ben Affleck's Batman because he's the one putting this team together. Of course, in this in the theatrical cut, they made him into a jokey Batman and Robin like one-liner thing scenario, and I can easily tell at points Ben Affleck was giving it his all in that cut. But there were a lot of cuts there where Ben Affleck is like, I don't really give a damn anymore. But in this version here, not only Affleck is much more given a damn, but in this cut, I really did feel like I felt bad for his character. He is on a path of redemption, especially after what happened at the end of BVS, damn near killing Superman, and then seeing Superman give his life to save his world. I love it. I love the arc that he goes through. At first, he tries. He he, and you can see the determination that there's this big threat, and he wants to basically get this team of heroes together. And I bought that, and I loved Ben Affleck in this movie, and I can't wait to see him in the Flash. And I really do hope, with the DCEU, I really do hope that Ben Affleck gets to stay on after the flash because this is my second favorite batman christian bell is always going to be my number one but he is in the top three with bell and keaton bell is number one affleck is number two and keaton is number three next up is my girl gal gadot wonder woman yes let me just say right now gal gadot in my opinion, she's a great actress. I know some people thought she's the miscast, and I know some people still want to give this girl hey after she clearly proved that she can carry this character in her own movies. Shut up! And in the DCEU. But I love Diana Prince here. I loved her in the theatrical version, but here, she is. We get more about her. She's still the same as she is, but we get to know more about her. Her, her side things and how she goes and her action scenes of course is really good of course she's attractive in the costume and of course throughout the entire movie but when it comes to actually having character weight you get a lot more with her and her whole thing with her family and the arc that she goes through I loved her entire character arc in this movie, and Gal Gadot, once again, is great. I can't wait to see her in Red Notice, and I can't wait to see her in Death on the Nile, and in the one, and in any more movies she's do. Gal Gadot is a great actress. Honestly, I gotta say, the big, big shining thing, we'll get there, the big thing I was very happy with was Ezra Miller. I know about the stuff going on with him, and I know some people don't really like this version of The Flash. But compared to the Whedon cut, where he was just obnoxious and overly jokey, even though there were a couple of moments with his Flash where he was being funny, I can easily tell that a lot of the jokes, some of the humor he had was obnoxious. And he really didn't contribute much to the plot. 
all he did was chicken out and didn't know how to fight and he saved a Russian family but he got out beaten by Superman here in this cut his humor is toned way down it works very appropriately with some other few moments of humor here you may think from the trails this is dark and depressing, but no, Zack Snyder actually put some humor in here. And that's what I very much like about it. But getting back to Ezra Miller as the Flash, I liked his character. I love he's much different from Grant Gustin's Flash from the 2014 CW TV show. But I really liked Ezra Miller as the Flash. Of course he's a great actor. His arc that he has to go through throughout the entire movie, I didn't. This is I didn't really get much of out of him in the 2017 version. But in this version, you get more development of him. You can tell that he have a somewhat relationship to him and Iris West, and you can tell that he loves his father. There is a scene in this version with him talking to his father, played by Billy Crudup, who unfortunately isn't going to be returning for the Flash. 2022 movie but his scene with him at in the jail cell with him calling his father and talking to him and you see you did get emotional way out of it and you do get a lot more character development out of this version of him and of course he he is trying to get his foot in the door to he because he does have a degree in criminal criminal justice and I liked his arc in the movie, and not only the arc, but his performance was great. He was funny when he needs to be, but he also had emotional weight when he needs to be. And if this is what they're going to do with him in his solo movie next year, then bring it on. Because Ezra Miller, he was once again great here. There's not much more for me to say about Jason Momoa as Aquaman, is that they gave him a lot more to do compared to the Whedon cut. He is very prominent here. Even though I do wish he was a little, had a little bit more to do, I still thought Jason Momoa did great in the role. I could tell in this version, you could tell that he still doesn't want to be have anything to do with all with Lances. He's on his own on Earth. He's helping these villagers out. And Jason Momoa, he did have some fun moments of humor, but he was also pretty serious and pretty badass when he needs to be in his action scenes in. I love Jason Momoa. I know some people give this guy crap for him as Aquaman. You know what? Fuck you! <laughs> hey, you! <laughs> you cut me off! Oh yeah, <laughs> for you! Shut up! Still, and the Aquaman character in general, but I personally really loved Jason Momoa and how his character arc goes through in this movie. Of course, he was great in the, his solo movie. But here he's just as great, and I can't wait to see more of him as Aquaman next year. Because Jason Momoa, he's great, and obviously he's going to be awesome in Doom. There's no denying that. Now we get into the heart and the soul of this movie, and the heart of this movie, of course, is Ray Fisher's Cyborg. Now, as much as I love Ray, F Ray Fisher, he is well casted in the role of Victor Stone Cyborg. A lot of his character development in the 2017 version was severely removed because this character and the next character I'm going to get to besides Batman and the Flash, I felt were done, I felt like they were done very wrong by the two hour mandate in the two hour in the 2017 version but this version, you get he has a big emotional arc that he cares about. You can tell that he resents his father, and he's going through a personal tragedy that happened with his mom and what what he used to do before his accident. How he connects with the motor boxes, and at first that he is ashamed of how he is now. But as the movie goes on, I grew to care about him, and I. We really want to see Roy Fisher keep playing this character going forward in the DCEU. Whether it's another project or not, I want to see more of Roy Fisher as his character because I think he was he was great. He's perfect casting here. Now we get into the soul of this movie, which this is the big guy. 
and that is Henry Cavill's Superman. This is basically a completion of a character arc that was set up in Man of Steel with him being this alien who has life lessons on both sides and him being conflicted should he go out there and use his powers for good or be or or just let people die or just hide from the rest of the world this is a completion arc, arc for him and in Man of Steel I thought Henry Cavill was great I love a lot of the character development they gave for him in that movie I know a lot of people really don't like what the, what they have done with this Superman as far as him causing destruction which half of the destruction is not entirely his fault so you can't really blame that on Superman and him killing General Zai at the end of Man of Steel that ain't no spoiler it, the movie's been out for since 2013. You should have seen Man of Steel by now. Even the arc in Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice, where he has to basically deal with how the world is treating him. Some people say he's good. Some people say he's bad. And to the point where it gets to the end of that movie, where he literally is willing to die for the sacrifice, the sacrificial way, for the for the good of humanity, to show that he's not a bad person. Here in this cut, while he isn't in this movie as much as I would have wanted him to be, his presence is felt throughout a large half of this movie. A large half of this movie. Until he, but when he does come back into the movie, I was sold. I was loving him. He is the Superman we know and love because. It's good to get that. Zaxon, this was something Zack Snyder said in interviews. He loves the traditional Superman, but he wanted to go for something different. And I very much appreciate that in a lot of ways when it goes to his character arc. And his character arc felt complete. Now, as far as the rest of the cast goes, of course we have Amy Adams returning as Lois Lane. And she... While she's not in the movie as much, you do see the fact that she is grieving over the loss of her lover and over Superman, of course. And in this movie, we do feel that. And I thought Amy Adams did a great job. You also have Jeremy Irons as Alfred Pennyworth, for which he does have some very cool, funny moments. Especially when he's interacting with Bruce or when you have scenes with him and the team or that one scene with Superman which was the deleted scene back in 2017 which I liked him in this movie. And he was he I loved him. He was one of my favorite aspects in Batman vs Superman. Jeremy Irons of course, Scar from the Lion King. He's a great actor and he does he does a darn good job in in the movie. Also, of course, other actors you have J.K. Simmons as Jim Gordon and Nielsen back for that little awesome scene on their mascara, which is so cool in the first half of this movie. With which we'll get into the action sequences in a bit. Joe Morton as Silas Stone, he plays a major big part in this cut compared to the 2017 version because I feel like. In the theatrical cut with him as Cyborg's father, they really did not take the time to delve in to his character arc, and especially his relationship with Cyborg at all. Here, he is not only used to to the best of his advantage, but he is also very well utilized in terms of the whole climax of this movie, and especially there is one scene with him and Ray Fisher which is very emotional. I watched this movie two times now since its release on the 18th and the 19th and that scene alone is so magnificently well done. It is very magnificently well done. You do have David Thulis as Ares and of course Deathstroke is in there and there is another actor in here which I won't say Oh, yes, of course, Jesse Eisenberg does make a comeback here, but he's not in as much. Yes, there is one actor, actor in this movie. We'll get to in my negatives. 
But everyone in this cast did a great job. I think everyone did a great job in this cast. The next big thing I do have to talk about that is a major step up from the 2017 version is Steppenwolf, played by Sierra and Hines, which great great cast in is Steppenwolf. And here in this version, you get, they get treat him so much better. Because in the theatrical version, not only that, that he was very mistreated in the theatrical cut to the point where they made him less of a threat and more of a wimp, but he also didn't have no characterization to him, no motivation. He just wanted to sit down just Justice League for nothing. And also, his design was horrible in the 20. 17 version ah! but here in this version not only is his look a lot better he has a lot more of an arc in this movie as a villain and it actually made me well made me boost him up to DCEU villains here he's one he's now no longer the worst one he's one of the ones that are in the middle or good and I like his motivation here. You can tell that he's doing this to please Darkseid. You can tell that he has a clear motivation on why he wants his motor boxes. Similar to Thanos here, where it's like you don't agree with him, but you do side and sympathize with him a lot here. And usually I never sympathize with villains unless there are really, really good villains. Also, I don't really like to sympathize for the bad guys in general because you're supposed to flat out hate the bad guys as long as you give them a motivation. And he had a motivation here. Also, Darkseid was great. I'm not going to say where he is, but I'm going to tell you right now. Watch the movie. <laughs> of course, we do have to talk about the action scenes because... Compared to the action scenes in the original cuts, the action scenes in the original cut were fine, but they were just basically kind of choppy and not very well done. But the action, and I don't blame Zack Snyder for that with the 2017 version, is more I am going to put blame on Joss Whedon because you may be a talented director, but there was no excuse Joss Whedon. Here, every single action scene is very well shot, is very well articulated, is very well done, and, is, and, and it's earned. Every single action scene feels earned. The moments with Batman kicking ass and Wonder Woman kicking ass in the opening scene, and that one little scene with her and the little girl, I thought was very, that's very sweet, which is only a couple seconds long. And, just again, why was all this removed from the original version? Getting back to the action, the action sequences, all of the action is really good. It's n this is more of a character study and more of a character driven film, just like in the way of Avengers Endgame. But the action in this movie is also really good, nice. The whole little backstory sequence with Darkseid, felt, that felt something like straight out of the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. The whole fight with the Amazonian warriors and the women of Themyscira going up against Steppenwolf, I thought that was very well done. Even to the points that were in the theatrical edition, such as Superman fighting the Justice League. I thought that was very well done. Better here. And at least there's no CGI mustache on Henry Cavill. Because... Mm, Ooh, you suck! Mm, that, that's cre that was a little... Took it off. When you get into the climax and the action scene with the all of the team members for Steppenwolf... That was awesome, and I thought that was some of the best stuff you was action you would see in the comic book movie, right next to something in Marvel movies or the action scenes in Into the Spider Verse. The movie is very well shot by Fabian Wagner. Even though this is the same color tone as Man Steel and Batman vs Superman, there is a lot more, a, more color put into it. 
especially editing the film's humor this time. That way you can feel the humor, because this is a dark film, but it's not overly dark and depressing. The cinematography work, there's a lot of camera trickery, a lot of shots that are just very beautifully well filmed, very well shot. The action, you can see what's going on. There's no quick cuts, quick editing, shaky cam all over the place. And all the action feels natural in the action scene. All the cinematography feels natural. And I also give credit to Fabian Wagner. Of course, production design and costume design are very well done, especially with the look of each of the heroes and even with the rest of the, the characters going on in the movie and the way the locations are shot, especially the final battle. The editing in this movie is very well done by David Brenner. Out for a movie that is four hours and two minutes long, some people will feel the pace of this and they might be one of those people who is going to be like this is too long but if you are willing to hold on for the first hour and keep going and keep going you won't feel that length anymore because there are I'll get back into it in the mix aspect and but we do have to talk about the musical score by Junkie, Junkie XL aka Tom Hulkenborg this musician has been around around for a very long time. He scored Mad Max Fury Road, he scored the music for Sonic the Hedgehog, and his music and of course BVS was some of my favorite parts right next to Hans Zimmer. And his music here is really good here, really good. I like the Danny Elfman soundtrack for the Whedon version, but this feels more appropriate for this version and for this movie. I loved hearing the new themes he came up with, the whole music that plays on the Battle of Themyscira, the crew of War Power, and the whole music in the final battle. Just, it's epitastic music to listen to. Of course, you do have themes from Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Man of Steel, especially the Man of Steel theme makes a comeback in this movie, which is necessary since this is a completion of the Superman arc that was set up in that movie. And Wonder Woman's theme is still just as awesome as ever. I can never get tired of the Wonder Woman theme. Ever. But Junkie SL score was great. And I can't wait to listen to his score. I've listened to the first two tracks that he released for Godzilla vs. Kong. One involving Godzilla, one involving Kong. I can't wait to hear how the music in that movie fits greatly because I'm pretty sure that's going to be a fun score to listen to in Godzilla vs. Kong. And also I just have to say that the structure of this movie is very well structured. Like I said, this movie it is a long movie compared to the 2017 where that one was only two hours. But if you're willing to hold on to it as I, I think you will be I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at all the things that were taken out in the 2017 cut added back in because it has a lot more mythos, a lot more characterization, a lot more world building, and a lot more time to actually get to know this team as opposed to the 2017 version. There are quite a couple moments in this in this movie I did with the mixed aspect one let's go into the runtime because this is going to be a big thing that's going to divide a lot of people I will think that some people will be able to breeze on through this with the four hours I never felt it except for a, a few moments here and there I will say that for some of the length some people will be put off by the four hour runtime because it is a big gargantuan movie but the best way I would suggest doing it if you can make it through all four hours go for it but if you have but since it's split into six parts you can watch the first three parts with the prologue take a break or and then go to the last six parts or you can do a part one part two thing watch one part one day and then the other part the next day because I feel like this runtime will put a lot of people off. If the runtime 
flowed on by for me is only really the first couple minutes where it was a little slow paced for me and there were a few moments here that I'm like okay this could be trimmed down a bit this could be trimmed down a bit but other than that I thought the runtime was fine it felt epic and to the same people who want to bitch and complain about the runtime of this movie I have some one little thing to say to you you don't say anything when you watch a full-on series or full-on season of a show. Nor with Avengers Endgame or the Lord of the Rings movies. But when it comes to this, you want to complain? It just shows how hypocritical you, you kind of are. There is way too much slow-mo here. There is way too much slow-mo here. I know Zack Snyder loves the slow motion. But there were quite a couple of times where I did like a lot of the slow-mo. But there was also a lot of times where I felt like you could have taken out some of the slow-mo. So this is just a mixed thing for me as well. I know it's his style, but if you were taking out at least a few moments of slow-mo, this, this would still be at least... A decent three hours or 45 minutes or something I'm not sure the last thing I do have to touch on when it comes to the mix aspects is the aspect ratio this was another thing besides Superman returning in his non traditional Superman suit that concerned me because I'm used to watching a movie in a 1.35 one as I mean a5-1 aspect ratio and of course the anamorphic widescreen format but it's like this is was shot in a 4-3 aspect ratio and the way it's done you have the black bars on the side and I felt like you were taking a lot of the image out of this movie by doing the whole sidebar things it did Bob distract me a little bit for at least the first couple minutes but as the movie went along, I didn't have that problem anymore. But I still kind of wish this was the same aspect ratio as either BVS or the 2017 cut of JL. Now, there are quite a few negatives here with this movie. I do have just a few. Not a, doesn't take away my enjoyment from the movie at all. I very much love this movie, but I do have to point out a few criticisms. One, like I said, the run time is a good thing that this is for us because you get time to breathe. But going back to what I said about the slow mo, I feel like you will took if you took some of the slow mo out and some sequences you could trim down at least a little bit, just a little bit. You could still had this be the same runtime as it is without having to sacrifice any character beats or any character moments or any important moments for that matter because four hours it is a big commitment but I held it in I held it in just like I held it in with Avengers Endgame and I held it in with all the versions of the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit it's just with this it it does feel a little bit lengthy with some scenes that could have been easily taken out or trimmed down or some of the slow motion, but it was still great. I just saying if you will trim out a few scenes, trim them down a little bit, just like Wonder Woman 84, I think the pacing would have been much more smoother. Well, some of the effects at times while a lot of the effects which I forgot to talk about in my pauses all the effects look really good at times Steppenwolf the superhero stuff the action scenes a lot of the effects in this movie look pretty damn good but there are a few times where it is a little bit wonky still which considering the fact that he only has seven million Snyder only has seven million seventy million dollars to complete his cut for HBO Max, I can't really blame the, the him too much, but there was some effects that I felt like could have been fixed up just a little bit more. The epilogue for this movie is awesome. I ain't no bones about it, but I will say it did go into that Return of the King S style 
scenario where you feel like the movie is just reaching its climax and that's where the movie should end but it still goes on for a little bit longer than usual i feel like this so a few things in this ending could have been a little trimmed down just a little bit and my big negative my big great negative towards one of the actors in this movie in the comment section people do not give me a bunch of freaking hate comments when i say this okay but Amber Amber Heard's mirror. Now I want to preface this. I am not condoning what she did to Johnny Depp, nor I am signing siding with her. Amber Heard in this movie did not need to be in here. She did not need to be here. I know she was in the movie during principal photography. I know that. But she contributes nothing to the movie. She contributes nothing. And Performance wise doesn't really help at all because her act Why does Mera have an accent? Please explain that to me because in the Aquaman movie the accent Was never there. I thought she was fine in the Aquaman movie, but here Mainly because of everything that's gone on with her and Johnny Depp and I shouldn't really hold it against her And I'm not going to it's just I'm judging her performance wise. I didn't think she was all that impressive here. I liked her in the Aquaman movie, but here, you could have cast anybody else. Honestly, my I would personally cast it Bryce Dallas Howard, Jessica Chastain, anyone else in that role. If anything, just remove her from Aquaman 2, which I'm pretty sure they won't, but if she has to stay on, at least have other female characters to balance it out in that sequel. This version of Justice League is a lot better than the 2017 Justice League. The 2017 one I can still watch, but it, the production troubles and issues are are relevant. And that is not as, as great as I remember it being. This version is a lot better in terms of character development, motivation for our villain, getting basically the full thing that Zack Snyder wanted. Even if it's four hours and two minutes long. And even with my small nitpicks, I think everything works amazingly well about Just League. This is very high in my DCEU ranking. I'm not going to do DCEU ranking right now, but I will go briefly over my ranking of the DC Cinematic Universe. I will do a ranking of the DCEU after Suicide Squad comes out. Well, James Gunn's Suicide Squad, of course, but Justice League's Snyder Cut has a great direction, a better, you get to care about the villain, you get to care about the heroes, there are stakes, there is emotional heart to it. There is some good use of humor at the right moments to balance the darkness. And overall, this is the version that should be counted in the DCU, and I would love to see Snyder get to finish his Justice League trilogy. Whether it's theaters or HBO Max, I still want to see you know, see how he will do it. As long as you keep doing solo films for DCU like more Shazam, more Flash, and hopefully Man Steel 2. I will be fine with the Snyderverse being restored as long as you keep doing solo films for some of these characters. For the system, I am going to give Zack Snyder's Justice League a better than Vampire Academy. It's almost close to being a Spider-Verse self approval. Almost close. Just those issues does hold it back a little bit. And now to give you guys my updated DCEU ranking for right now until I do a full on ranking video. And here we go. And number 10, Joss Whedon's Justice League. Number 9, Suicide Squad. Those are the only two I think I have big flaws with but still watchable 
everything else here I do, do love. Number eight, Bruins of Party. Number seven, Shazam. Number six, Man of Steel. Number five, Aquaman. Number four, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Number three, Wonder Woman 1984. Number two, the original Wonder Woman. And number one is still Batman vs. Superman Dollar Justice. So that was my full line spoiler free review for Zack Snyder's Justice League. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section down below what did you guys think of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you somewhere in the middle? Let's have a friendly, civil conversation in the comment section down below. If you all follow all my social media links in the description box down below. All of them are down there. Be, also, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notified when the next video, live stream, or post my community chat goes up. If you like some money to my channel or you want to DM me, DM me. You can DM me there to do either one of those things, and I will get back to you. Also, if you will check out my merchandise store on T Public. As well, as you like seeing anything from my Amazon wishlist, you can do that as well. Just get in part of the contact with me. And with that being said, you guys keep it cool. Enjoy the epitaphs. And I almost forgot for autumn.